Today I'm going to install this camera on the exterior of my building. It's going to look out on some parking spaces in the back just to see what's going on. And uh, the first step for any project like this is to have all the right parts. And I bought the official case for my Hikvision security camera. Buying the official case is usually a great idea, except in this case I had those little holes that were not tapped correctly. So I had to re-tap them myself, which is kind of annoying. When I did that, I actually went through the case a little bit. But, you know, all's well that ends well. Uh, but in this case, I needed to run the cable from my server closet. And uh, I was going to run it through the ceiling and use some wire hangers that I had pre-installed when we redid this space. And I pre-installed the wire hangers along some of the support beams so there's routes for the cables to go. And uh, my dad actually came over and helped me with this. Uh, it's always nice to have another person to help you with, especially parts like running the cables and uh, poking things through walls because that stuff is hard to do with one person. You have to go in and go out and go in and out sometimes. And it's a lot easier when you have somebody just to help guide a cable or help pass something through. It's also nice if you fall off a ladder or something, they can take you to the hospital. Luckily that didn't happen in this case. But uh, for this part, I was just pushing the wires through the little cable guides, getting it through the ceiling and getting it towards that back wall, which is a block, a cement block wall. Uh, and really the only hard part of this was getting the wire through that cement block wall. And it wasn't hard, it was just annoying and tedious. Throw it over there and hope I get all the way. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Uh, mostly because of this kind of thing. There's only a narrow band of access because underneath those other panels, there's a giant Ooh, irrigation pipe for the, the building sprinkler system. So it's hard to get those panels out. Uh, but here outside, we use this A-frame ladder. I would have brought my extension ladder, but uh, the A-frame was a little bit easier to fit in the car to bring out on that day. And here I am measuring the box, trying to find the right location. Somebody, a previous tenant, had put a, some sort of large hole in the wall. You can see it's kind of covered up uh, to the left of where the box is here. And that would have been the ideal location for this box, but unfortunately I didn't want to drill through that and, you know, have it, have it all pop out or something on me. Because that went all the way through the wall and the patch job was not amazing on it. Uh, but to mount up the box, I marked the holes and then I used my uh, DeWalt hammer drill or rotary hammer, I guess, is this one is. And uh, the instructions for the, the redhead uh, screws said to set them in with a quarter inch of extra space behind them. Ready? High protection. High protection, yeah. See? Yes. Uh, but one, one annoying thing about working high up, and especially without my extension ladder, is you need some leverage to push against the hammer drill. And I didn't really have that, so I actually grabbed onto part of the door frame and pulled on it while I was pushing in on the hammer drill to get these holes to, to get uh, started. If you don't push, it won't engage the hammer in, in the chuck and it'll just be drilling like a drill and that's not very useful when you're going through concrete. I don't know, you, can you break that outside something? Or... No, it, it, going just, it, it doesn't engage the hammer until you push. Oh, until you push, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't forget to blow them out when you're done. I use a little can of spray. If you have the ability, always uh, try to drill in a way that the wind is blowing the dust away from your face. I'm downwind of it. Yes, uh, evidently I have to feel the wind blowing right at you. <laughs> the whole thing is right in my face. Nothing better than breathing in concrete dust. You got a bigger one, or is that the biggest? Well, I have the chisel, which would not help. Yeah. And then I got the That's massive. That's a at the bottom. What is that one? Seven eighths. Seven eighths. Almost an inch. That's it. I have some teeny tiny ones. Seven eighths. I only had, I think that was a three eighths inch bit. So I have that on my list to buy one, and it'd also be nice to have a longer one, because you'll see why it's nice to have a longer bit in just a second. And yeah, it's good to drill at an upward angle. If there's any moisture that gets into the wall, you want it to drain out and not into the building. So never dr drill downward from the in outside to the inside. Uh, did not go through there? That's not, 
Well, measure the block on, you know, go down, like you just, you know, measure a half an inch or higher from the edge of the block and just go inside, it's the same block, right? Yeah, that's true. There's a styrofoam in there. Because I did not have a long enough drill bit, I had to go inside and kind of guess where that uh, hole is. And this was probably the least fun of the entire operation because trying to jam the long rotary hammer in there and hold it and support it and pull against the wall is not fun at all. See if I can get any. I got your head at See if I can get this. Okay, this is going to be awkward. Yep. And like I mentioned earlier, right, you can see that pipe in the background. There's a giant irrigation pipe that's uh, blocking access. So even if I removed those tiles, which would be very difficult, there's not much room to, to work up there. We're definitely through all that. Ooh. Now can we make it from inside to outside? And I actually didn't get much of this on film because my dad and I were working together on it and we forgot to turn on the camera, but uh, we, we went back and forth a couple times trying to find the best way to fish. I don't have a fish stick, like a, a long, it's not the kind you eat. Uh, but we, we eventually got this wire through just guessing and poking around. Uh, but then on the outside, I put in these, these red set anchors. Uh, you might wonder why I didn't use the anchors that are included with the kit that I bought. They have concrete anchors. Those are meant for solid concrete, basically, or a uh, block where it's concrete all the way through. These are hollow a little bit, like after an inch or so. So you want to have something that will push against the concrete itself, and the plastic on the redheads do that, uh, versus the concrete anchors that are longer, the masonry anchors. They only push against at the back part of it, which might be in dead space, and then you don't get as much holding power. Uh, and it pays to have the right uh, tools. I have my drill here, which is a little bit annoying. It would probably be better to have an impact driver to do this. The impact driver means that you don't have to push so hard on your drill to get it to, to keep contact with the screws on these Phillips heads. If, if these were Torx or something, it would be a little bit easier, but these are Phillips, so you have to push hard with a drill. <laughs> and the impact driver would, would mean that I wouldn't have to hold and get leverage against that gutter. I can hang on that. All right, let's get the cable into here now. It's already there, but that's not the cable. Well, it's a narrow... And just because the hole was narrow, I taped these wires end to end instead of taping them, uh, you know, looping them around each other. It was a very short run, so I don't think that's that's a big issue here. Okay, it's inside the wall now. There it is. Ta-da, look at that. Okay. First try. And then we can do something like that. Batman always said that. That's how strong I am. <laughs> Just ripping cat Snap five cable. Cat six cable. <laughs> and to be yeah. clear, that is uh, Cat 5E yeah. plenum, so it's suitable for that location. And uh, to seal it up, I use that duck seal. It's very cheap to get some duck seal, and it's a pretty good sealing compound for something like this, where there's a little, there's very little moisture that'll get there, but whatever it does, the duck seal should take care of it. And I uh, put the duck seal on the inside around the cable and on the outside, and I just uh, looped. I left a service loop maybe like four feet or so up in the ceiling in case I need a little more wire at some point. And I will leave some more service loop on the other end too, because I always like having flexibility afterwards. It's always better to have more cable than less. This is also my old crimp tool. I have a newer one, but I couldn't find it. I think I left it at home somewhere. Uh, but the old one works great. I've used that since I was in grade school, actually, for crimping RJ11 and RJ45. And then before I went outside, I made sure to prep this entire kit. I uh, put the camera on it. I adjusted the camera lens to what I think it should be. I uh, cleaned the dome because cleaning the dome when you're up on a ladder is a lot more annoying. And somebody suggested I should replace the little desiccant bag that's included inside the camera. There's a little bag with little, little uh, moisture absorbing balls. And I, I could have done that. I don't have any on hand here. I had some at home, but I don't have any at the office. 
So if it becomes a problem and there's moisture in there, I'll put a new desiccant bag in there. Uh, that's what it's for if there's humidity uh, and the, you know, the temperature differential. If the dew point is correct, then the dome will get moisture on it and then it obscures your vision. Uh, but so far it hasn't been a problem in the past week or two that this has been up. Uh, but it is nice to start with a nice clean camera. And doing this all on the ground on a table is so much easier than doing it up <laughs> on, a, on a ladder. So don't ever like bring all the parts up on a ladder and do it up there. Do this all down here. And that's why the official kit from Hikvision is kind of nice. It has those little, um, that you can see those two little metal things that hold it on. I'll, I'll show them in just a minute. Uh, so you can mount this up and then make the connection and then screw it in. So those are the little, the m little metal holds that uh, keep it on the wall. And then I can make the connection. I, I still use the outdoor weather sealing uh, connector because even though there shouldn't be any moisture in that box, there probably will be at some point, you know, if in, in the next year, two years, five years. So better to, better to use all the layers of protection that you can. And then uh, I just tighten these down. These were, I don't remember what size they are, but they're, they're bolts, That's bolts. Using the ratchet driver for it. And there it is, ready for, I don't know how many years of monitoring these parking spots uh, and also seeing what wildlife comes by back there. At the end of a job like this, it's always satisfying to clean things up and make it look nice. I know some, some installers who do this for a living would not ever get to see this part because <laughs> they're installing in a space that has no finished work, but it's always cool to do a project like this and then afterwards be able to get everything back in place and looking nice, except for this tile, which I had to kink a little bit because for some reason it would not go in. And uh, these, these tiles are actually very flexible. They're a different kind of tile than I'm used to. They have uh, fiberglass on the top, so they're good for sound. Uh, they're not as, and they're, they're pretty easy to install, but anyway. There's a service loop on the other end of the cable, and I actually left an, an extra like 10 feet on that side because I might someday move all my PoE cameras from this location where there's a wall-mounted rack over to the bigger rack, which is on the right side here in the picture. And if I do that, I need a little extra cable to get over there. But there's all my runs. You can see there's some service loops for other cables up there. And uh, here I am tidying it up. It's always easier to tidy up every time you run a new wire than to run a wire, leave it messy, and then tidy it up. Never, because you're never gonna do that. Not unless you redo your entire network. But even inside of these cable channels, I, I like to keep the cables separated. So these are all the PoE camera cables. I have a few other runs in the ceiling that I'm not using yet, uh, but I like to keep them all together. That way I know kind of the purpose just by how they're grouped. And these cable channels aren't necessarily the best option here, but they work and they look nice and they're fine for me. Uh, the next step is to terminate the end that's in my rack in the patch panel. And of course, you always wanna label your cables because you know, next time you come at it, you're not gonna remember what, what one is. You might unplug the wrong thing and that's never a good thing. And I like these, uh, these keystone uh, jacks. I, I think they're from TrendNet. They're shielded, which I don't actually need for this particular case, but uh, the one downside to them is having to use these mini snips to get them, uh, get the little ends cleaned up. They make a tool for it, but the tool is a lot of money, so I just snip them by hand. Uh, but I like them because they're solid. They're very robust, and I've used them for a few years and never had an issue with any of them. Uh, but also, labeling the patch panel is a nice way to finish it off because labels are good and make it a lot easier to know what things are without having to reference a network mapping. The other thing I love about the way that I set up this room, not to pat myself on the back too much, but this little patch cable holder on the left side, I'll leave, I'll leave a link to that in the description, but uh, I put a bunch of patch cables of varying lengths on it and anytime I need one, I just walk over there, grab it and put it in. It's so nice. That teamed up with the neat patches. I have a neat patch in the mini rack and a neat patch in the big rack. It lets you make your cable management so nice and tidy. 
And uh, there it is. It works. Always make sure you clean up after yourself when you do a job like this. And using my Pi NVR, here is the first time that I walked out of the building and, and Frigate actually identified me properly. So there it is. Camera will be there for who knows how long.